Welcome to Travel Market Life, your companion for industry insights and professional business development. Travel Market Life. Join us by webcast, video or podcast. Hello and welcome to Travel Market Life. This is LinkedIn Live from the International Hotel Technology Forum Europe here in Barcelona for the 21st edition. We're on day two and you'll be hearing a hubbub of activity behind me as the business meetings, the one-to-one hosted by our event is taking place currently. Uh, I think they're on their sixth meeting so far uh, where vendors get to sit down uh, with hoteliers from generally portfolio and group properties. I'm actually going to lift up the video camera just so to get an idea as to sort of like the number of people that are in here um, and uh, what is actually happening uh, in this massive conference center at the Hyatt Barcelona. Uh, we're going to be coming to you with a number of conversations and interviews with hoteliers and also vendors at this event uh, from across these three days. We've been cut there two streams of this day and uh, hopefully at some point uh, we'll be able to we'll be joined uh, by Ted Horner who is the host of the technology and operations program. I'm Ryan Haynes I'm the host of the distribution and marketing program and uh, with that uh, we've been really looking and exploring areas of the use of data within the industry and ways that uh, payments and procurement and how marketing and distribution is enabling a better guest experience and improving efficiencies for hoteliers. Uh, there's been a series of panel discussions as well as presentations from hoteliers, including the likes of Chris Bowling from Best Western. We've also heard from Elva Bernal uh, from uh, Hesperia World, as well as Florian Hepp from Marriott. But joining me now, um, Coming in, please, Henrik. Um, thanks ever so much for joining us. Uh, now, you're Henrik Castro from Evolution Cascais. Please tell us about the hotel brand um, and the hotel that you've just opened. Of course. So we just opened the only lifestyle brand in the coastal side of Lisbon uh, called Evolution. So it's a typical lifestyle hotel with entertainment, uh, awesome uh, restaurant uh, offerings. We have four outlets on site with 400 seats for food and beverage, which is pretty big. And yeah, it's a cool, casual, yet very good uh, brand. To stay. When is Lisbon not cool and casual, though? Yeah, I don't know. You still have a lot of hotels that aren't that casual. <laughs> uh, I normally say that your typical general manager is wearing a suit by now. Uh, and I don't know. I just opened Mama Shelter Lisbon last year. And following that, that success, I opened Evolution Cascais this year. So yeah, I like uh, to change between lifestyle brands. That's fantastic. I mean, that's obviously a market that's massively opening up at the moment. And you said that you opened in October. Right. There is a big process you have to go through in order to open. Indeed. And I guess there's been a lot of changes over the last five years. Yeah. Uh, guest experience, guest expectation, yeah. um, staffing. What are the ad adaptations you had to go through as you went up to leading towards the opening of the hotel? So I feel that our industry is going for a phase where we're getting much more casual. And I think that needs to change mainly on the teams. So when I hire somebody now, like I just expect them to be fully professional, yet informal. And it's something that you still don't get. I remember my experience in one of the, uh, my competitor hotels in Kishkaish, that I was treated like royalty, yet I was just coming in for a romantic getaway. And I felt that the procedures along the check-in were so heavy that I just wanted my room and a bottle of wine to relax. And yet the guy took 15 minutes to show me everything I already knew. So I think we need to be very adaptable depending on the type of guests we have in front of us. Uh, but yeah, I think this is one of the trends. That's not by chance that Four Seasons rebranded their logo to be like a pink uh, light colored. Uh, and it's one of the most conservative brands around the world. So I think the whole industry from luxury to budget is getting much more on a personal side with the guests uh, when it comes to interactions. I mean, we are at a technology event. Um, yes. So what are you looking at when it comes to technology? And what are some of the technologies you've implemented within the hotel that are really having an impact on both operations and also the guests? I think what I look for from a general manager point of view in technology is to be seamless. Now, of course, we all have the, the B2B side where we are uh, improving our rankings online with the websites and direct bookings, etc. But nowadays, what I look for is something that makes the 
the guest journey as seamless as possible. And I think there is still a lot of technologies that the guest itself needs to be putting a lot of effort. For example, I think nobody wants to download another app to, to, to access the window shutters, for example. So I think like we, uh, the industry, need to be, make it as seamless as possible. Uh, one of the learnings I took from Mama Shelter opening was that when you come into the room, the light system is super easy. It's like at home. You have an off and an off button. At my hotel currently, it's fantastically designed, but it's super complex. So it's a lot of technology on the background, on the electrical board, but the guest doesn't even feel it. And for him, at the end of the day, it's just a hustle. Excellent. And what's it been in regards to sort of like staffing the hotel, training them up in this new method of service and delivery? I think it was very easy. Uh, I have a few followers on LinkedIn, which helped to boost uh, the recruitment phase. And uh, I think by being a young, uh, dynamic, modern general manager, that allows me to attract a younger crowd that it's basically just get off university as all the diplomas and all the ticks, but yet it can be a bit more casual, yet respectful and educated. And have you had to adapt to sort of like um, culture of staffing or the way that you sort of reward and, and, and retain and acknowledge your employees? I haven't had to adapt because since I've, the past four years, I've been doing something from scratch. I basically, from the hiring process, I hire people like I expect them to be. And that normally that plays out well. Uh, so what I look for is attitude, really. And uh, I think nowadays, as long as you have somebody that truly cares about service, you will get there with less of few training, more training. Excellent. Enrique, thank you ever so much indeed. So much. I know you've got to get off, Ryan. but it was lovely to meet Take you. Cheers, thank man. you. Um, so we have a number of people that we're going to be talking to over the uh, next uh, 30 minutes or so. Uh, coming to us uh, next, uh, we've got James Lemon, um, who joined us in the payments uh, special edition that we did just recently for the uh, April Travel Monthly Review Show. Now, James uh, from Stripe, um, how has the event been for you, your first time at IHTR? It is actually, yeah. Like I'm a regular on the travel circuit, kind of done lots no of things. No way. Events. <laughs> we often see each other at them but this is our this is our first time but i love it i think the format of um you know buyers and hotel chains being together in that buying frame of mind really a real discovery mindset is is great and that's really important in in payments because it's a really strategic topic there's lots of new innovation so knowing that the big chains and the tech firms are out there trying to figure out you know what's new how do they get involved what are the benefits um yeah it's lovely for stripe to be having those discussions I mean, as I mentioned earlier, we've got tables behind us, just lines and lines and lines of them. And I know that you've got your own dedicated table. Yeah. You've had those interviews uh, or those, those, those conversations. So where, where do you see you get the most value when you get those, have those conversations? What do you feel that you need to do to really maximize the opportunities you've got with those is it 30 minutes with each hotelier? Yeah, it's a good question. I'd say most, most know two or three things that they're already looking at. And so it's about helping them deal with the challenge or the opportunity right in front of them. And then it's trying to, broaden the conversation a bit and be like, look, did you know what else is happening? So for us, for example, you know, everyone is thinking about direct bookings. And at the end of that marketing funnel, having a world-class checkout with local payment methods, you know, able to check out in one click, like they know that that's what they're looking for. And that's often the start of the conversation. But you know, Stripe is a full payment infrastructure. So they often don't know they might be able to set up a membership program as part of their loyalties, have terminals with Stripe in their restaurants and, 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 and rooms that talk to each other so you can start to get that one view of the guest. So suddenly it goes from, you know, I need to strengthen my checkout to well, actually there's a really lovely story here about delivering a better guest experience, making life easier for teams at the hotel. So it's, it's great to be able to raise those topics up yeah, in a one-to-one -one environment where everyone's in a learning mode. Are you seeing any nuances in conversations between like the big global brands and sort of like the large group portfolio companies? Yeah, you know, we, we definitely do. And Stripe work with everyone from you know, the top 10 chains, so your Marriott's, your Accor's, down to Innovative Independence, to some of the leading regional guys like, you know, the Hoxton Ennismore group. I think we certainly see the smaller groups moving quicker. You know, they're, they're typically owner operated and lots of the owners are here today and they're like look i really want to get going this year before the summer season what could we innovate on now with the bigger chains it's it's a lot more discovery and it's kind of hey, over the next couple of years we're going to be innovating more but of course they have this tension between what does the group hq decide what do the management companies decide what do the owners decide and payments is right at the heart of that because you might have a global online checkout but you're actually taking payments at the hotel. So getting those systems to talk to each other is something that Stripe spends a lot of time on. But it'll take time for those guys to roll that out globally. And uh, yeah, 
excited for that journey. Excellent, James. Thank you ever so much. Appreciate that. Always a pleasure, Ryan. All right, thank you. Um, So coming now, we're going to have uh, one of the uh, organisers of the event here, um, which uh, is, you know, collaboration really um, with uh, Arena International, uh, which really programmes the event, and then the owning company, Global Data. So uh, Charlotte Newton, uh, thanks ever so much for joining us. Um, So what is, tell us about IHGF in general and, and what you're trying to achieve this year, particularly from this event and, and hope hoteliers and the industry will, will, will benefit from? Um, I think that's a key word. I think it's collaboration. It's knowing how um, to sort of help each other out, particularly in this ever-changing and dynamic world, sort of digitalization is key as well. So I think there's been a lot of interesting discussions on sort of particularly for a lot of hoteliers and lodging providers here of how they can sort of enhance the guest experience. So it's that sort of transfer of information. I'm excited to sort of find out more, I think, from myself as an analyst and part of the intelligence side of things. It's it's really good to get industry specific insights as well. So yeah. Now I know there's a bit of an announcement because IHGF has just been in Europe really for the last few years and, and you had previously done an Asia edition, but what news have you got to share with us about IHTF regional editions? So, yeah, there is going to be an IHTF Singapore coming soon. So, yes, that's very exciting. Um, targeted to our sort of APAC market, which obviously huge in this site. It'll be interesting to see um, the vendors there and sort of what the story is over there. And, yeah, no. so that's some of the big announcements and potentially for the Middle East as well. So, yeah, yes. really expanding. It's fantastic, obviously, because having that regional level really does help a lot um, from us being able to get an idea as to um, sort of what's happening at different levels, isn't it? Because everything is so different um, and and different different regions. And through your global data, through your analysis, you must see some interesting trends and developments that are happening in the market at the moment. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, it's sort of it's changing and expanding rapidly. You know, we're seeing now sort of the huge advancements in AI, so really getting that message across as to what can be achieved there, but also just sort of helping to understand the sort of macroeconomic landscape that we live in now. So some of the trends we're seeing, obviously, are how we can help more the sort of price conscious consumers, sort of how we can navigate yeah this ever ever changing world so so those are some of the key things that i would pick out for any company to pay attention to moving forward that's wonderful i mean i've been i follow global data's content and there's a lot of fantastic stuff in there so if anybody's actually wondering how i'm so up on the know these are some of the guys that actually enable me to know what's going on with the trends and you you do do quite a few different research reports and insights don't you and uh, what was the most recent one uh, that you perhaps can share with us uh, that you were looking at particularly for the industry Um, So, yeah, we have come out with a generative AI in travel and tourism report. We do um, AI executive briefings. We've also come out with our quarterly um, geopolitical um, executive, geopolitics, sorry, executive briefings, which give us real insights into sort of how both consumers and companies are responding to market challenges at the moment, um, as well as how they can sort of um, start or expand that digitalization process for business operations as well as um, other areas. So, yeah, those are some of the key things to point out. Um, We've also expanded a lot of our ESG research. I think as a trend that sort of tends to get put on the back burner in uh, moments like this, where people are just sort of focusing on how they can navigate this sort of crazy world we're living in. But yeah, ESG should never be ignored. We're continuously looking into that as a trend, a theme, regulation, how companies can improve their ESG performance. So yeah, we do a lot of reports on that as well and a lot of client briefings. Excellent. Charlotte, thanks ever so much for joining us today. Really appreciate those insights. Uh, so as you say, you know, you can check out more of this and find out what's going on um, with IHGF through those platforms. Uh, I have one of the other sponsors now joining us. Um, it is Alberto Alberto Plaza Jimenez. Jimenez. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. I mean, you know, these triple barreled names that some of you have, I really struggled to get my tongue around it as you just identified. <laughs> but Ideas Revenue Management System. Um, I spoke with uh, Michael McCartan yesterday, your area, area VP here in EMEA. He was part of the data and delight panel discussion. And this role of data within revenue forecasting, why is it so important at the moment? And, and, and what are the data points that you're looking at as a, as a business for hoteliers? 
Well, the data is becoming more and more crucial these days. Uh, the more I know who my guests are, what they want, what they're looking for, the better the better I can personalize my service and I can uh, price accordingly. The better segmented, the more granular the data is, the you know the, the better outcome you will get. And in terms of data points we take, so similar to what a revenue manager does uh, on his daily basis, you know, revenue manager will look at historical data, will look at future pace, it will look at the pickup, it will look at what the competition is doing, it will look at how do, what do they stand in terms of reputation versus versus the other. So Revenue Manager Simple does all of that. The key difference is, is that it does it all the time, continuously, and it does it automatically. Okay, so it saves that time to the revenue manager and, uh, you know, it removes also the, the, the gut feeling when it comes to making decisions. You really make informed decisions at that moment. And as you can imagine, a machine can can analyze much more data and at a faster pace than any any human being can can possibly do. So that's uh, that's what we do in a natural. And that all feeds into all the other data systems and platforms that a hotel is already working with. So with that seamless connectivity, that data is being shared backwards and forwards. Exactly. So we collect data from the PMS, from the ratio per, from reputation systems, from other sources like, for example, benchmark uh, uh, tools like BSTR or forward demand. And then once that data is collected, we produce a forecast, a projection, what is going to happen on that business, who is coming, what do they want, and then we can send those decisions, uh, those pricing decisions, restrictions, whatever it is, automatically and filters, as you said, to, to the PMS and to the channel manager. You don't have to do it manually. And, you know, when, when you're having these conversations with hoteliers now, I mean, how is that uh, knowledge and awareness evolved? Uh, you know, where are they with their thinking processes? Is there still a lot of education you have to go through or are they very aware of it and, and are more looking at how they can effectively implement it within their brands? It's a really, really good question. So uh, some of them are ready. So probably I think it's a, it's a process. Some of them have been thinking for years. They know it's necessary uh, to do that. But, you know, it's, it's scary, no, at some point, not to, to, let's say, give some power to a machine and then removing, you know, moving from a comfort zone where you are doing everything manually. But hoteliers are, are getting there. So some of them, as you said, have been thinking for a long time about it and then they decided to do it now. Some, they're just starting to, to be interested in what can, can be done in that sense and then thinking of possibly implementing that in the future. So a bit of everything, but uh, more and more is becoming, uh, you know, it's becoming something, I think will become a commodity moving forward, not just now, but moving forward. Excellent. That's wonderful. Thank you ever so much, Thank Alberto. So much. Lovely to speak Thank with you. you. Uh, right. Okay. Uh, we're going to go for a quick break uh, just now, and we're going to be uh, hearing from um, Mustafa from the Chevel Collection, um, who I spoke to uh, just a couple of weeks ago. And actually, he did a quick presentation here at IHTF, where we explored really um, the, 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 the approach of technology and hospitality. Contemplative. And he goes, Mustafa, let me ask you a question. What is our product? And, and me sitting there trying to impress the CEO, I start listing rooms, beds, hotel states. And every answer I give, he goes, no, no, not that. <laughs> uh, I, I went through everything that I could think of. And I, there is also a sense of curiosity, like what is the right answer? I, I, I just give you things, <laughs> 10 different things. And I said, okay, all right. I don't know, what is our product? And he goes, memories. Uh, I think that was a cornerstone for us. Uh, the beyond technology, the amenities, the luxury, and all the offerings that we provide, the true offering lies in the memories that we help our guests to uh, create. Um, it, it, kind of give me uh, guide me to prioritize innovations and solutions that enhance the guest experience uh, uh, to ensure that they have those memories when they uh, leave us and till their next stay okay then joining me now um i have raymond knotts um from preferred travel group and carsten vernet uh, from seahut so raymond you joined us on a conversation just a little bit earlier and we were looking at sort of like that guest experience and, and really sort of revenue side as well for hotels um digitalization has obviously been the key word um where are hotels now over the last year been looking at sort of technology systems they're implementing within their properties to, to Get them to harness more and leverage more of the market. Well, a very good question, and uh, thanks for bringing this up. And 
usually it's a PMS side of life and then uh, everything about automation and uh, digitalization, um, but also looking into the full um, guest, guest journey process, what, what is needed, including a CRM, including uh, technology to communicate. So this is what, what property is currently interested in, um, interfacing everything and make it really seamless to use. Kind of handy that we've got Carsten here then from a PMS at Seahut. Uh, we've we've talked so much about this role of cloud and the importance of SaaS systems today. Where are hotels looking at now when it comes to selecting their PMS? Because that seems to be a, the deciding factor. And 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 what what sort of questions are they asking or what are they exploring with you? I guess that is actually for all of the PMS is the same today. Like what is your integration capabilities? Like how do your APIs work? Are they open enough? Like, can I actually do whatever I want to do? But to me, it's not really that anywhere an issue because you talk to all of the PMS vendors and they all offer the same. It's, it's open API. So it's, to me, it's not really the matter of, do you have open APIs? No, it's really about how does your partnership ecosystem really works and do you have the capabilities and the connections to the other vendors that actually can give the full pictures because there is no one-stop solution as it comes down to the digital guest experience an example there are so many providers out there with a different focus so you need to have the openness but then also you have to have the ecosystem and publish the ideas on how to integrate them that's that's my five cents on it yeah, I mean, one of the other areas I know you've been looking at as well is that integration of payments and actually having a way that hotels can most effectively manage their payments. Can you tell me a bit of a snapshot of you know what that what that ecosystem for payments looks like? So, first of all, we are not only bound to one payment provider. We actually still allow our customers to select the payment provider of choice, and then we seamlessly integrate them into all of our products. So, not matter if it's the booking engine, a payment link or whatever you actually are using from our ecosystem. It's all integrated within the same customer experience. So really getting a frictionless experience for the payment. And quite frankly, we had a talk this morning where they were using fake credit cards on a booking engine. Well, that doesn't happen with us because we do real-time transaction, do really charge the card, send, send and send even then all the payment information into the PMS so that the invoice is directly uh, provided to the customers which is quite different from a lot of the other systems that you can find in the market today. So a lot of efficiencies there then, Raymond, when it comes to sort of how these property management systems can work. But when it comes, you look property management system, you know, what are the other technologies, the two or three technologies that hoteliers are really focusing on getting right within their tech stack? Oh, actually, everything what really impacts the customer journey um, this morning we talked about the ever-changing um, guest behaviors, uh, which happens globally. So this is truly, truly important to focus on on those topics um, and everything belongs to it. Um, you mentioned payment uh, solutions. Uh, it also belongs to everything, which is um, uh, how, how loyalty program could be integrated. Um, um, until, you know, CRM solutions uh, to really know the customer and um, make the most of it. Personalization is, is the key on, on those things. Uh, until um, I had a very interesting discussion, discussions about uh, how this is handled on, on site, um, approaching customer with you know a lot of lot of property information. So um, just just back to the to the old property information which I had on the on the desk when when it arrived, just to make it digital nowadays. So everything is, is really important throughout the customer journey. And it really starts at the, at the right at the beginning of the research for travel. So it already starts on on, on, on meta search. So everything is important, and everything needs to be interconnected and in the best way automated. I mean, it, there's quite a few. I think there's a hundred or so vendors here. Um, so quite a few um, different technologies. Um, from your from what you've seen here, um, both of you, the, the last couple of days, is there anything that has really interested you, surprised you, um, or a, a piece of kit or solution that you think is, uh, you know, qu quite a turning point uh, for the industry or, or an essential point that maybe hoteliers, uh, us as an industry, haven't really focused on so much? Um, to me, one, one came straight, uh, straight to my mind, which is Marcus. We had on a panel this morning from Gawendi. Uh, on the on the sales engine thing, 
um, and um, how to customize the selling and how to optimize revenue out of this. Excellent. Thank you. And Carsten? I was actually surprised to see a security platform vendor here and that was giving a really nice talk focusing on the hospitality industry and how it's really affected by phishing attacks and, and so on and so forth and how, how it's actually now in the focus of some hackers and, and groups because it's more easily to get into hotels obviously to get credit card data and so on and so forth that i found really interesting and that was the first time i saw it on the show excellent wonderful thank you very much um so we're going to have a quick break now we're going to hear um from Boyan um in in regards to uh, really sort of like the developments that have been happening for him within technology and and how he approaches that and harpreet um in regards to service delivery within hotels when I think about that topic, I always struggle between the two things. Uh, I want to say technical fit is mm -hmm. like the first step that I do. But I would say more often is cultural fit the first step that we do. So because I, I, I'm i more and more uh, uh, um, prone on actually going deep into conversation about, let's say, the roadmap of the company, how they do things. So, so I do technical slash culture fit discussion. Of course, I'm interested in, in the technical aspects that I need, uh, uh, but I'm more interested how I consume these aspects, right? So I call that as a cultural fit. So simply like if, if somebody offers the best ever housekeeping service that I'm consuming on FTP, it's a no-go. For me, that that's a no-go. But if they are trying to explain and they are temporarily doing that for some larger reason because they're then i might be still very interested in that right because i like where they will be in like a month or two or three or etc so i would say important uh, step is try to to check if the company you work with is in the on the same let's say wavelengths as you are uh, the biggest challenge you see is to deliver the profit or bottom line and where you start cutting corners, I wouldn't say cutting corners, but the operational efficiency is the right word. Uh, you look at how you can uh, deliver the operations, uh, i.e. your food delivery to your reception delivery with less number of people. And then that's where it comes by multitasking your people. And I think the multitasking is, is, is the word which has been used quite often now in the industry. Uh, and we see more so... Uh, with operations, you see challenges with people as well. Uh, like people aren't there after Brexit and COVID. Uh, the talent isn't there in the industry, i.e. your chefs are missing. So people are looking at how we cut down on our, uh, or go down to a chef fresh kitchens with uh, delivering food from frozen to cooked, which is a good quality food, but with, without chefs. So these are one of the efficiencies driven. Whereas you see a, a front office person now uh, serve, uh, checking in people, serving on the bar, and then after that, cooking uh, this frozen food as well. So it's all all, all those things I've seen changing over, over the period now. Hello and welcome back to the IHCF in Barcelona. So joining me now is Marcus Muella from Galvendi. Uh, you joined us on a panel discussion uh, this morning where we looked at guest behavior. And one of the interesting things was sort of like using emotion really to drive sales and contextualizing that. Talk to me about some of the insights that you got from some research that you did recently. Yeah, absolutely. So so basically what we do is um, we have the, we are lucky enough to basically um, introduce a concept called dynamic inventories that we actually able to sell the same physical room in different ways. That allows us to do that emotionalizing, emotional priming, as we call it in the marketing stage. So what we did is we, we um, basically at the time of booking, so we presented the different, not room categories, but maybe room categories, some emotional naming and emotional images. And what worked really well was basically, as more emotional as it gets, especially in the higher categories, that takes away from the pricing, from all the other staffs and the hotels where all the people who book basically just book more of the emotional products, which tells us why I'm traveling in the first place. You know, I want to buy, it's an element of storytelling in it and so on. So the specific example here was, as in, I would say um, it's a three-star economy hotel, pretty much book standard. Every room is the same, but they had a category with uh, Ryan View, all right, and then we took, took these rooms and said, okay, some of them actually are facing the sunset. So we sold them as Ryan View, Sunset View, Ryan View. 
and those rooms uh, sold and, and changed the image, right? So we, we had a sunset kind of image imagery in there, and they sold much better than just a normal Rhine view, and it, and it yielded immediately higher average returns. So emotionalized priming works. So it's the imagery and also the textual language yes. that you are using to sell that. So just tell me about Galvendi, please. Yeah, Galvendi is, I alluded to that, it's basically um, at dynamic pricing everybody understands, right? You have a product category today is costing 150 bucks, tomorrow 200. What we do is the concept of dynamic inventory. We're taking, in addition to a dynamic pricing, we take the same physical spaces and sell it in infinitive ways, hyper-personalized or the opposite and lucky rooms or whatever. And this allows us basically to sell by channel or by different audience or segments um, in a more relevant contextual way. And it tells us more about contacts. So a couple of use cases for that would be your um, booking engine we replace it with sales engines. Another use case is more automation. I can read out guest comments and stuff like that and do my assignments a lot better. Uh, another use case would be I can change my distribution. Um, you know, changing, saying, I want to sell on this channel like that. I want to sell on that channel like that. And directly, I want to sell hyper-personalized, driving more direct business. So there's multiple use cases for that, similar to dynamic pricing, right? So yeah. it's unthinkable that nobody would do that anymore today. So, and it's the same. We believe this is going to be the same with dynamic inventory in the future. So we are at the forefront at the beginning of this uh, thing. So that's what we're doing. Excellent. Thank you ever so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Lovely Thank to you. speak to you. Uh, joining me now is Pierre Skuro from Blastness. Uh, now, actually, that ties in quite nicely uh, to the conversation I just had with Marcus, because you do a lot of, you know, driving traffic. But one of the things, key concepts you were talking about uh, during your presentation was dual revenue management. Could you just summarize yeah. what that is for us? Revenue management, uh, I could make an example, very easy. It's like when you are trying to organize a vacation, and you see a very nice flight, for example, I don't know, from London to New York, 500 euros, very good price. Then you call all your friends, you try to organize your trip, uh, you get the okay from everybody, and then when you go to book, suddenly the price raised to 1,000 euros. So now you know that when happens this thing, you can blame a revenue manager. <laughs> this is revenue management. Obviously, it comes from airlines. This is the whole history. Uh, and that was where I started working. But uh, then uh, I was quite lucky to move in the hotel industry that I prefer because there's many more things to do. And today, uh, my speech was also about how revenue management is important in the hotel business also to generate direct bookings. Because direct bookings is a very big issue in, this, um, uh, in the hotel industry. And I think that the wrong point uh, where a lot of uh, hoteliers are still facing this problem is that they don't face it with, a, let's say, um, an holistic approach. It's just each department against the other. While, uh, from my point of view, rev in developing the direct booking must be inside the strategy of a revenue management team. This is one of the key points of the success. Excellent. So tell me about Blastness, please, and the services that you offer. Yeah, Blastness, it's uh, an Italian company. Uh, at the moment, we are more or less 150 professionals divided into uh, revenue management consultants, customer care, and technology, so developers. Uh, we have more or less 1,100 hotels clients. We are mainly present in Italy, but we are looking around going to Europe. And uh, our we have a wide range of products go from uh, booking engine and distribution systems to channel manager. We also do market intelligence, business intelligence, and revenue management, both with an RMS, and, but also with revenue management consulting for independent hotels that might need it. And we, have, we are very active also in the website productions and all the parts of digital marketing. It's absolutely phenomenal presentation you gave this morning. Very insightful how you touch into all areas to drive that traffic, but also make sure you look out for those third party channels yes. to also drive that performance. So really interesting. And I say you've been at all these different events so far. Um, how do you find IHTF? Uh, well, I, I have to say that I love it. I, can, <laughs> I mean, I, I'm sorry for all the others, but I, I feel that uh, I can really be honest. I, I'm, I like a lot of other events, but I think that this one, it's very nice because in just a few days, you have a chance to meet a lot of uh, amazing person. There are a lot of moments of contact. Actually, I also met you here last year and it's like a family that sometimes we meet. Actually, I was with the guy before and, oh, last year we were together in line to talk with Ryan. So it gets you know, all this kind of community. Uh, I like it very much. 
I really enjoyed it. And then having it in Barcelona is also adds uh, a little bit of flavor, Latin flavor that I like. Excellent. Lovely to hear it. I completely. Pierre, thank you ever so much. Absolutely wonderful to chat with you again and have you back on here. Absolutely. Right. We're going to speak to a few hoteliers now. We have a Gerald Lampert from Virtue Hotels and Resorts. You also joined us having a conversation about the guest, uh, the the guest experience this morning. But uh, you were talking, you had your own little, little presentation just before as well, looking at sort of the buying side of technology, didn't you? And, and, And sort of the approach that you take there. No, 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 not the buying side, uh, more on the project management side. Project because, management, uh, thank you. Okay, T- tell us a summary of sort of like, you know, what advice you give to hoteliers when it comes to sort of looking at that aspect of, of project managing. Right, the whole topic was to discuss about how to uh, conceptual, uh, the, from the conceptual standpoint, how to build a hotel and the whole process all the way to uh, opening it and operating it. So we, we discussed all the phases that are in between. So from the development side, the site survey, the marketing research, before selecting a venues, and then also the uh, the entire process of designing the technology, depending on it's, it, if it's a branded hotel or independent hotel. So we went through this entire process. Very interesting and fascinating topic. Absolutely. And how are you finding the market performing at the moment? And you know, what are you looking at achieving for Virtue Hotels over the coming twelve months? Overall, the market is booming. Surprisingly, it's it's amazing since the return of COVID. Uh, um, after COVID, it's it's booming. Uh, for Virtue Hotels and Resorts, we have a a potential of increasing about 50% of our portfolio within the next 12 months and uh, the occupancy is uh, tremendous so um, very positive excellent Gerald thanks ever so much for joining us today I really appreciate your input there another hotelier we've got Christoph Peppers from H Hotels Uh, thank you ever so much yes absolutely (laughs) wonderful to see you here and your trousers uh, which are just absolutely fantastic (laughs) design I I need a pair you can send them over to me when you're done with them Um, now you uh, we're going to have a fireside chat um, looking at sort of like the role of chatbots but you also got another presentation here as well do you want to tell us about that and, and, and why it's such an important topic for yourself H Hotel. Now, well, let's, let's do it pretty quick. So it's about affiliate marketing and hospitality. And I think uh, affiliate marketing and hospitality is pretty much underrepresented um, in or doing conferences like this because it is a wonderful channel for direct bookings to just to improve the direct performance and to keep the, to, to get the people on your on your website. So therefore, affiliate marketing is very important for, for channel mix, not only Google ads, not only meta search, but affiliate marketing is a big part of it. I mean, do you, do you see that growing or just do you need to manage it much better? It's it's growing because uh, the last I started like three years ago working for H Hotels and we see the performance just going and growing and growing. And people are more into like uh, certain certain pages and um, where to find, of course, discounts and some, some, some nice offers and stuff. But still, it's also about content awareness and these kind of things. And therefore, it's getting better and better. And we, we onboard more and more publishers to, the, to, the, um, to our network. So therefore, it's, it will even increase the next couple of years, I think. Now, tell me about the technologies here. Which ones are interesting you at the moment um, and perhaps captivated your eye or those that you're looking at trying to sort of procure? Is there anything on your radar? Uh, doing IHGF. So actually, I had some some interesting meetings with Evergast, for example, which is a kind of a reputation tool. And I know that there are, there are already a lot of these out there, but they are focusing their, their, their strategy on AI. And of course, AI is just, it's the biggest buzzword in it since the last two years, but it's still, I think their approach is pretty nice. And what I've seen is pretty nice. And also, uh, I had another meeting with AdChief, which is also interesting, just supporting you with your, with your Google ads and stuff. And so it just minimizes the workload for yourself. So I would have definitely some other calls with them, some more calls with them. Excellent. That's wonderful. Christoph, thank you ever so much. Appreciate that. Look forward to catching up very soon. Um, And joining us is uh, one of our expert panelists for the uh, uh, Hospitality Monthly Review Show, Johnny Seabury. How are things going, sir? uh, It's very well. Thanks, Ryan. Nice to see you. How's things for you? Yeah, things have been going well the last couple of days. It's really interesting, some of the conversations I've been particularly having. And um, some of the people who've returned, who weren't yeah. here last year, and yeah. they thought, oh, better get in with the hoteliers again. And, and some of the new people that I've been speaking to. I mean, there's a lot of new faces and new companies. So yeah. you've been here for 11 years, I think you said you've been coming. Yeah. yeah. So what's new for you? Uh, met a few new people. One of the big buzzwords this year I've found is AI. There was a little bit of that last year, but not so much. But people have or vendors have seemed to embrace that technology and are now putting it to to work into products and solutions that are of use to hoteliers. So that's something to keep an eye on. Um, met a couple of guys yesterday from a company, Centelli, who were got a digital worker, what they call it, completely new to me, but it's uh, 
it's basically a, it's a bit like a machine in a factory that does repetitive tasks over and over again, but you can program it to do things through your PMS or your finance system or whatever you've got on board. Things like, you know, checking no-shows every morning and, and it'll just go in and do those automatically. It, was, it blew my mind. It was an amazing piece of kit. Uh, it's a bit like an Excel macro as well. Something's the same process every day, but it's boring and monotonous and staff don't like doing it. This digital worker can do it for you and it never phones in sick and you don't have to feed it. So that was really interesting for me. That sounds like there's a change of career there available for you. Quite a salesman there, Johnny. <laughs> yeah, possibly. I was well impressed with it. And it's not AI. It doesn't learn. You program it. You tell it, press key A and then key B and then that key and just keep doing that over and over again. And it just does it. And it's, yeah, I was very impressed. And what about some of the presentations? I think you've spent most of the time in the technology and operations stream, haven't you, when it comes to the to the program? Has there any been discussions apart from AI uh, that have particularly interested you? Um, yeah, I've been switching uh, across back and forth between both streams, really, Brian. Um, but a lot about the guest experience has been coming up as well, which is in my corner as well, uh, digitalization and uh, anticipating guest needs and you know giving them the, the, the seamless journey from booking through to checkout in, in one platform and sort of uh, customizing needs depending on the demographic of the traveler, you know, single business traveler, family, weekender, all these sorts of things. So that, that's something that I think we need to get on board with. Travelers are becoming a lot more pernickety fussy not fussy no that's not fair uh, sure of what they want um whereas you know years ago they were a bit more accepting of what they were given in the hotel but now they turn up and go i want this this and this and of course we've got to be able to deliver it so we've got a tool to help us embrace it hug it that's what i say I was going to say, one of the things that I've particularly noticed is that there's a lot more technologies or systems that are sharing data or dashboards or insights with other departments. There mm -hmm. seems to be a closer knit between sales, revenue and marketing uh, distribution as well. Uh, how are you sort of seeing that play out um, in the conversations that you're having and, and your approach to things internally? Cause, so you just mentioned this whole guest experience thing, and yeah. that's not typically a revenue side, is it? Uh, it's not, but it's, you know, as a hotelier... I specialize in revenue that's that's my area of focus but of course running the hotel and providing the guest experience is all part and parcel of the career path um there are a lot you're quite right different systems that cover different areas and some of them talk to each other and some of them don't personally i'd rather one tool to cover the lot rather than having three or four for different areas and different times and then you move one to the other if one breaks or there's a you know a, a lapse in communication, then it affects the whole journey and that sort of thing. So I'd, I'd avoid the booking tool and then the different check-in tool and the different in-house tool and the different this, that, and the other. It, it just becomes cumbersome and messy. So finding those integrated solutions that actually yeah. do end-to-end. -end. And uh, we're starting to see that. We're seeing that through the, some of the acquisitions and, and, and companies actually looking at how they can di uh, sort of open up their tools and, and their solutions to, to provide those extra functionality, aren't we? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's becoming easier for uh, third-party tools or systems to come in and be able to harvest the data that they need to perform, you know, like a SaaS product to perform the solution that they're designed to do. And the, the initial software, like the PMS, for example, are a bit more open to be able to providing this kind of data with their APIs, open APIs, and being able to, you know, allow the, the SaaS to dial in and get what they need. And of course, the big buzzword is data and protection and privacy. And so that's got to be key. And, and companies are getting their hands on this and getting their heads around it. And yeah, it's working out. Excellent, Johnny. Thank you ever so much. Great to see you. Off to lunch now, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, mine is too. I look forward to joining you. See you later. Um, so um, we have um, one more uh, guest here at the moment. Uh, we've got um, Matthew Proza from Agilisys. Ever so much. Thank you for much, so much for joining us. Get my words out there. Um, so you also joined us on a conversation this morning. Um, IHTF, it's something you've been coming to for a while. Uh, what is the value you get from IHTF? Well, I think IHTF. TF has a, a unique proposition. I think they mix the uh, opportunity for us as suppliers to present our proposition to the delegates and also the, the content. I think they split that between the two very, very well. You know, great content, great moderators, um, to say the least. And, and I think we all leave here a lot more knowledgeable, a lot more understanding of the uh, uh, challenges 
uh, that face this industry and how we can try and apply, certainly from my perspective, technologies to resolve those matters. I mean, I always talk about the fact that you get to sit down for 30 minutes and have a proper conversation with a hotelier, which is, in this day of age, it's really hard to get a face-to-face -face meeting in the first place, but also to be able to connect with the right people who are either the decision makers or the, or the influencers um, out there in the industry. Um, what, what, what are you seeing from those conversations and, and how are those evolving, maturing, and, and, and what have you got from, from those conversations in the last two days? Well, before I answer that question, I think this platform provides that informality, all right, to um, have that opportunity to talk to these decision makers uh, at, at, a, at a level that, that, you know, we all can, you know, understand each other's challenges and, and obviously how we then talk about the, you know, the, the resolution to those matters. Um, but, but yes, I mean... You know, for me and for, for the team here, it's really all about just trying to convey to these individuals that, that are, are faced with challenges year on year. Actually, you know, why do the same thing that you've done for the last 20 years? You know, there is opportunity for change. Opportunity for change typically drives efficiencies, better profitability. And, you know, I represent an organization that can absolutely deliver a lot of those. And we have some great case studies and clients that are utilizing our solutions. But, yeah, for us, it's, it's about just driving efficiencies, generating a, uh, I think an experience both for the operator as well as the guest that really homes in on the challenges faced by today, whether that be the cost of living, um, whatever it might be. It's all about trying to reduce those costs, uh, reduce the outlay, um, improve the experience for the customers, improve the experience for the operators, which is really important because if they're not happy, the guests aren't going to be happy. And then how do we bring all that together in, into one ecosystem? So let's just share with everybody, what is it you do then at Agilisys? So my role uh, is a sales role. Uh, I have responsibility for uh, the UK, Ireland, the European region, as well as the Middle East, which is far, far too many countries to manage. So obviously we have to be strategic in, in our efforts across that region. And, uh, you know, today we have, presence in 25 countries uh, we work with some of the biggest brands in the world in providing our solutions to them as well as you know the five-star luxury market the resort market and then stepping outside of actually hotels both in the their leisure and same space whether they be theme parks whether they be cruise lines which is actually a, a a great asset i think to our client portfolio in terms of how they have adapted to technologies, how they've adapted post-COVID, and how we can perhaps bring some of that thinking into the hotel space as well. So it really helps us. Excellent. Thank you very much indeed, Matthew, for joining us today. I really appreciate the conversation. Um, so um, this is coming up to the top of the hour now um, here at uh, the International Hotel Technology Conference in Barcelona. Uh, I'm very much needing to fill my stomach before we enter an afternoon program. Uh, so we're going to leave you with some final messages and particularly some of the recent uh, episodes that we have done at, uh, at Travel Market Life. Thank you ever so much for joining me. I'd like to give a special thanks to Dan Maggie, um, who has allowed us to stand here, particularly to have all these interviews. Um, they've been in a fantastic position uh, for us to be able to actually hear what's going on in the background and be able to speak to um, all the people that uh, I've, I've been able to touch base with whilst I'm here at this event. One more day left. And uh, thanks ever so much for joining us on this live bro broadcast. Very well. And another key trend that I think is also, we also start in this discussion in hostels more than hotels, is about the gender policies. We all know that there's like a big topic about gender, identification about gender, how to define yourself, what should be the freedom you should have, uh, depending on the different culture and depending on the different countries you're living in. And hostels, because we have the mixed dorms and sometimes the female only dorms, it raises all types of questions. And for example, if I have someone that was born a man, but identify herself as a woman, should we allow her to stay in a female dorm? Yes or no? And it brings all sorts of discussions about security, safety, well-being for the other guests, open-minded, all that. So a lot of these uh, trends have been discussing again, because we have the hotel guests of tomorrow. I think they've been discussing today in hostels and very, very, very interesting. You know, last year we had the second highest willingness of change workplaces it was just higher in 2019 where it was at 39 percent last year it was 37 percent but i want to say that 
you know, what's key for associates in 2023, if you look back on a full year last year, um, it's a lot about money. So 67% of respondents would say, I want to be paid fairly, which is totally understandable. That is a plus of 13% in comparison to 2022. But it's very interesting that work culture, company culture made it into the top five last year. And that's for the very first time. So I think that, you know, work culture and alignment in terms of values is becoming more and more important, you know, talking about inclusive environments, talking about career development opportunities, talking about corporate social responsibility, work-life balance, all those things need to be more aligned with the personal goals and the personal desirements of younger associates. Last, um, well, in 2022, we um, changed the team to a four-day working week. And that has made a massive impact for us in terms of um, our recruitment and also maintaining the staff that we have got here because we are enabling um, people to have a work-life balance. So um, that has been a big thing for us. Um, we're trying to think outside the box a little bit and just, you know, hospitality is um, a brilliant um, profession to work in and we want to showcase that. Um, we are doing a lot of cross-training across departments just to help us in terms of flexibility. So if the covers do pick up, we can, you know, most of our reception team are trained on in the restaurant. I'm the hotel manager. I'm in the restaurant most days. So we're just a very flexible team that will support where needed so that um, we can kind of react to that um, flex in bookings. And then um, we've introduced uh, milestone rewards, I think, last year, um, where our team members for kind of, you know, the longer they stay, they get different awards, um, like a dinner in a restaurant or an overnight stay. Um, and that kind of really has helped us as well. And the staff, you know, feel rewarded for staying longer. And then just in general, as a company, we really invest in our people. Uh, we put them through courses, um, working closely with the colleges as well, and just kind of really trying to inspire the next generation of um, uh, to come through and into the industry. For more, go to travelmarket.life. The music, Sensation by Zach Nelson, is reproduced under license from Storyblocks. Travel Market Life is a rainbow social media and advertising production for Haynes Marcom's Digital Marketing Agency.